part two of a three-part series where we are exploring herbicide damage in the garden. The focus of this episode is helping the home gardener diagnose herbicide damage. Welcome to the Growing Zone. Look closely at these two pictures. It is easy to tell which plant is healthy and which one is not healthy. But are these symptoms caused by herbicide injuries or something else? Some plant diseases, insects, and abiotic factors can also cause symptoms that look similar to herbicide injury. But there are a few symptoms that provide a clue to possible herbicide damage. There are many classes of herbicides that cause different symptoms. In the following examples, we will look at symptoms of injury caused by auxin growth regulating herbicides such as Piclorum, Dicamba, and Clopyrrolid. These symptoms typically show up in the newest growth of plants in the form of cupped or curled leaves. Another symptom could be elongated new growth as shown here in these tomatoes. Other symptoms of herbicide damage include odd shaped or deformed fruit like this tomato. These plants were grown in soil that contained herbicide residuals. A soil test revealed the chemical pachlorum was present in the amount of 0 .067 parts per million. This seems like a very small quantity. However, it was enough to cause extensive damage to the plants. The most susceptible plants to growth regulating herbicides include plants in the nightshade family, such as potatoes, tomatoes, and eggplants, as well as legumes, including peas and beans. Remember, Insects or other abiotic factors such as wind, winter desiccation, or sun scald can also cause damage to plants. So what do you do if you are experiencing any of these symptoms with your plants? Your first step is to confirm the diagnosis. If you suspect herbicide damage in your garden, contact your local county extension office. This resource is an invaluable partner in confirming the diagnosis of herbicide damage. They may ask you to bring in a plant sample or pictures for them to inspect, or they may even be able to come out to your garden to evaluate your plants, the soil, and other surroundings. In addition, most extension offices have access to a diagnostic laboratory. If soil or tissue testing for herbicide residuals is requested, your local extension office can assist you in preparing the soil or tissue samples for this testing. They may also be able to assist you in completing a bioassay of the garden soil. We will discuss bioassays in a moment, but first we need to learn how to take soil samples. There are two ways to correctly take a soil sample. The first and most effective way is by using a soil probe. Oftentimes these can be borrowed from your local extension office. A bulb planter is also a fair substitute if a soil probe is not available. The second way is to use a shovel. In using a shovel, you will first want to remove the soil from the hole and set that aside. Then you will want to scrape the side of the hole as close to vertical as possible in order to get a good sample of the soil profile. In either case, you will want to take a representative sample from about 8 to 10 different places directly next to the affected plant, more if you have a large garden. Combine these samples to make your composite sample that will be used to complete a bioassay or for sending off to a laboratory for testing. A bioassay involves using the representative soil sample from the garden area and planting seeds from a plant that is widely susceptible to herbicides such as beans or peas. This test will help the gardener determine if the soil is the culprit in your garden or if it could be another source. To do this, place the garden soil sample in four to six pots. Then, fill two other pots with soil that you are certain is 100% free of herbicides such as a commercial potting soil. Be sure to label these two pots as your control pots. 
Plant the bean or pea seeds in the pots according to the instructions on the back of the seed package. In three to four weeks, and after the plants have two to three true leaves, you will start to see the symptoms of herbicides if they are in fact in the soil. Another option is to perform a field bioassay where you can plant the seeds directly into the suspicious soil. Of course, for a more thorough investigation, another option would be to send the sample to a laboratory for analysis. Your local county extension service can assist you in locating an appropriate laboratory to test the soil and or plant tissue for herbicides. The testing may cost upwards of $200 and it may take several tests if you don't know what herbicide may be present. However, depending on your individual circumstance, this may be worth the investment. Laboratories can test for herbicides in the soil as well as in plant tissue. Contact your local extension office or the laboratory you plan to use to get information on how much soil or plant material is needed and how to package and mail the material to the laboratory. Some of the common symptoms of growth regulating herbicides include curled or cupped leaves, elongated new growth, or odd shaped and deformed fruit. To verify the presence of herbicides versus a disease, abiotic factor, or other pest, gardeners can contact their local county extension office for assistance, perform a bioassay of the garden soil, or send the soil and or plant tissue to a laboratory. Your local county extension office is a valuable resource in assisting you with this diagnosis. In episode one, we answered the question of how herbicides may have gotten into your garden. Answering this question is also an important piece in helping you with the diagnosis. Be sure to catch episode three, where we will discuss what to do if herbicides are found in your garden as well as future prevention techniques.